Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm. Take two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we have Galatians 6 2. Bury one another's burdens and so fulfill the laws of Christ. So we need to be uplifting each other, bearing each other's burdens, um, doing what we can, making the world just a little bit better, you know? So, uh, Okay, I have not worked on, I, I worked a little bit on the round world. I think I made two more squares on the round the world inspired blanket, but I really haven't done anything with that. I gave in to temptation and so I don't have a whole lot of crocheting, but I finished the target. So, um, yeah. All right. This spun up, and it was actually really nice to spin. Uh, it produced 240 yards of a two-ply. And so I will be dyeing it. I don't know when, because I might just, I don't know. I got to figure out what it's going to be first. I don't know. So, um, yeah. Have that one spun up, yard it off. I just have to dye it and let it dry and it's ready to use. So, um, and then I didn't stop there. Oh, excuse me. I went ahead and started the targi. I've just been on this spinning thing. It's like, oh, fiber. And I have two pounds of fiber in there. I just really wanted to try these. I haven't done any breed specific spinning in a long time. And y'all know I love breed studies, breed specific, all that. The next one I started with was the Tunis. This is one of my favorite fibers, but this Tunis has a big problem. To look at it, you know, it, it looks like Tunis. I don't know if you when you hold the ball up, it looks very scrunchy. Now it is, um, it has vegetation in it, but y'all know we never jacketed our sheep or our goats, and that didn't bother me. I don't care about vegetation matter. That's not something that bothers me, not anything that, what well, bothers me? I just pulled this off the end. I want to see if I can show you. What bothers? See all those second cuts in there? I don't know if you can see them. Um, until you pull it out like this, you really can't. Okay. I'm trying to see if I can. I wonder if there's something colored there. I have a little. On that and like help you see the the dot. There we go. You see that? Second cut. There are tons of them. As you open up the thing, they've been washed right in. There's one right there. There's one right there. There's one. There's one. This has got, and I know the camera is having a hard time focusing. And this little piece, it's got way too many. And the problem is, is that's making my thing. See, now that you've seen them, I don't know if you can see them. When you spin it. See all of them? They're a little dark white. Those are second cuts that have been washed in. So whoever showed the sheep didn't do a very good job. Um, because that is throughout the entire thing. That's not just in one spot. And I spent a whole lot less. Let me see. This right here. Because it's got all those second cuts. Right in there. Okay. Now. Do you see them all? All the dots and all the white parts. And so. 
And this, even pre-drafted this thin, I spin much thinner than this. So, <coughs> oh, excuse me, got sinus strange today. This is what I get with lots of bobbles. Now, the question is, is can I get all those bobbles out? No, if I take all those bobbles out, I wouldn't have hardly any fiber. Um, so, this is just going to have to be a textured um, yarn. Because, honestly, it, it wouldn't wouldn't make anything if I took all the half or the second cuts out. Um, when you are sharing, that's one thing that RJ and I always did. When you're sharing, if you have to go back and make a second cut, remove the fleece first. Let it be there. Just shear, you know, and yes, you'll have a little bit of staple, but if you make a second cut and it goes into your fleece, you get fleece that is not um, processed very well. I mean, it is processed as well as it can be with second cuts. So second cuts makes awesome textured yarn. And I wish you guys could see. Um, my camera's not all that great for seeing this. But you can see, like right here, there's one, two, three. All those dots should not be there. Um, and all those big blobs should not be there. Okay? When you pull this out, you should have just fiber. Okay? Not those fuzzies. Um, all the little balls and fuzzies. I didn't want it in there, but I'm not going to ditch four ounces of fiber either. So, um, yeah, not the best tunis that I've done. And basically it's just because the, sh the shearer put second cuts in there. And when those get washed in, they make bobbles. And if I was to try and pick every one of those out, it's just not feasible, number one. And number two, it doesn't leave you with much fiber in this case. So here's that phrase again. It is what it is. It's going to be a textured yarn. We'll see what happens. Um, as it turns out, the tunis was processed at the same place that I got. <sighs> Sorry, I'm yawning. Uh, I'm sorry, strange. Didn't sleep very well last night because of it. my nose kept plugging up. Um, anyway, so I got the other fiber at the Fiber Festival. It was the South Down something. Can't remember. It's written down in the other room. But anyway, those people that had that fiber also processed this fiber. I honestly hope there's not a ton of second cuts. I, I really do. Because that fiber would be amazing. If not for second cut. So anyway, that's where that's at. Um, I've been doing my little workouts and that in the, in the farmhouse, I guess. Well, and I have been working on, I don't know if you can see it, but I guess I don't have to take the whole thing. Let me just take the camera. Good. Okay, don't look at my laundry. But I have been working on this. So, yes, I got my sewing thing and I am working on this is, I haven't decided if I'm going to put the zipper in the back or the front, considering right now at this point, it is all the same. Um, that was a nice little adventure and horrible camera work. So, sorry about that. Okay. Anyway, I've been working on that, and that's about it. Um, I did go down. Let's see here. Where are we at? I'm forgetting my little things here. What have I got? Um, I haven't written down still. It's just, I just. All right. In the chapel, we did totally hook. Didn't have anything. In the basket, didn't have anything. In the pots, I didn't have anything. On the wheel, we discussed the thing. In the field. Oh, okay. So, um, I 
had the garden going and with how dry it's been, it's literally been dry for a month and we're in drought conditions. They're saying don't water. So <coughs> the tomatoes were not doing anything anyway. Um, not, they weren't even able, the bugs had stripped all the leaves off them. They just look like stems. So I mowed over those and the cucumbers, same thing. They had started to turn, the leaves started to turn brown and just, I think that the bugs were eating through the stems. So I mowed over that. Then I took the bell peppers and I moved them to the front where the flowers died. <laughs> so I have container bell peppers. They're, uh, California Goldens, and we have not gotten that one bell pepper, but I thought, hey, if I keep them watered out front, maybe they'll do better. So, I moved those to the front, and they seem to be seeing green, but we'll see if they put on any buds. If they don't put on any buds or anything, I'll just trash them. Flowers died anyway, so the only thing I'll have left is sage. And then, Ruby gets okra. It's doing wonderful so if i liked okra we'd have plenty of okra but i did leave the okra and i left the zucchini plant even though i haven't gotten anything and i'm just feeding the rabbits so i don't know it is what it is but i did downsize the garden just because parts of it were dying out and it's so hot and the watering our electric bill and water bill have gone up you guys know I live on a tight budget, so when those things go up, they, it gets tighter. But, anyway, so downsize that. Um, and then this last weekend, I have a huge blister. I don't know if you can see that. Because, and it's actually two blisters, because I went down two days and did it. The first day I went down to the pond, and... I uh, pulled more stuff out of the pond. Um, I raked sticks and stumps and leaves. And anyway, I uh, got one, two, three, three piles out. But then I had started a fourth. But this is actually two blisters. I don't know if you can see it. But the first day I got this side right here. And then there's a little indent. Because the second day I got this side right here. So I had a blister on top of a blister and it went to hurting. So, yeah, I had to stop. Um, but I got a ton of stuff cleared out. I'm going to take the old lawnmower that we really don't use for mowing anymore. And I'm going to hook on the little trailer that is out here. And next weekend, which this is Thursday. So, in a couple of days, I'm going to go down, and I am going to pile all that up in a little sinkhole that's down there. And when the weather allows, we're going to just burn it right down there at the thing. But I'm also going to start clean, keep cleaning out, because the pond keeps going down. Yesterday, I went down there to feed the ducks, and I found an old glass bottle with something in it. And it was liquid, and I thought, huh. But the glass bottle was the old metal lid type that screws on. And I thought this would make a cool base or, you know, something pretty. So I took it out of the pond and I brought it up here and I looked at roommate and she, she, she oh my gosh. So it turned out to be beer. That's all I'm going to say is it stunk. Um, oh my gosh. I poured it down a crawdad hole outside. I didn't open it inside. Um, I took it outside and uh, opened it up and poured it down a crawdad hole. So there might be a drunk crawdad out there. I don't know. It reeked. And you could smell very, very strong fermented beer. And it was found in the pond. So I don't know where it came from. It's been there quite some time. Uh, but I do have the bottle soaking, see if we can't get it cleaned up, um, but yeah, it's a cute bottle, if I can't get it cleaned up, I'll just throw it away, I mean, it's, it is what it is, you know, so, um, but the pond is coming along, the ducks are mighty happy, um, it, 
the only thing I hate is that it's going down so low, but until we get rain, I'm hoping that it doesn't dry up because there's still fish in there. Tons and tons and tons of fish. Every log I pull out, there are hundreds of fish around it. No, I don't know what kind they are because they're like this big. And some are that big. And some are, you know, they're not full grown fish yet. So, either that or we got a big old minnow pond. Who knows? I don't know what they are. So, anyway. Alright. I've got to get ready for work. So, I'm going to get off of here. Just wanted to kind of update you. I'm a little disappointed in the fiber with all the second cuts. Um, my Halloween costume's coming along. Just puttering. Just puttering. Uh, the other thing that we did do is that roommate and I decided to cut the electric bill. We turn it up to 80 when we leave. The dogs seem to be doing okay with it. We leave out plenty of water and stuff, and they don't seem to be phased by the 80. So when I leave at 8.30 in the morning, I turn the thermostat up to 80. And then when we come home, or when I come home for lunch, I turn it back down to 70. I think we normally keep about 74, 75. And then by the time roommate gets home, the temperature is fine. So um, it gets a little stuffy in here, but at lunch I come right in and turn it down and it gets to work. And so we're hoping that that will save a little bit of electric bill. I don't know if it's really good for the air conditioner though. That's one thing, you know, people are like, change your thermostat. But I don't know if it's good or not to have it work that hard to lower the temperature in here um, after being up so high as opposed to just keeping it steady. I don't know. If you have any thoughts on that, let me know. Anyway, um, RJ's doing good. He rodeoed all last weekend. He's home this week for a few days, and then he's off on the road again. So, um, truck is doing good. I think we're all doing okay, just kind of everyday life this week. So, um, yeah, nothing major to report. I will talk to y'all later. I'm going to go to work and thanks for watching.